going through the confirmation process to become OMB director as we film this, or at least recently, was Neera Tanden. And Neera Tanden is an interesting figure in American politics for a number of reasons that I'm sure Jordan and I will get into. But at least today during her confirmation hearings, mostly conducted over Zoom, her past social media activity came up. Because she's pretty aggressive on social media. And she also, Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong, tweeted more during the Trump years than Trump himself did, which is really saying something. That is not easy, but I believe she did. Anyway, some of those tweets came up. Here is a Senator, I believe it's Rob Portman, talking about some of her tweets. You wrote that Susan Collins is, quote, the worst. That Ted, Tom Cotton is a fraud, that vampires have more heart than Ted Cruz. Uh, you called Leader McConnell, Moscow Mitch, and Voldemort, um, and on and on. I, I wonder specifically, how do you plan to mend fences and build relationships with members of Congress you have attacked through your public statements? Senator, uh, I very much appreciate that question. I recognize the concern. I deeply regret and apologize for my language and some of my past language. Um, I would like to take that back. He's not Voldemort, um, and really we shouldn't be saying that name so casually. He's more of a death eater, really. Um, but anyway, Jordan, what, what do you think about this, about Neera Tandon's quest to become OMB director and the fact that those tweets in theory could hold her back? It seems unlikely that it'll have that effect. It probably won't, but God, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just like it's it's great to see, uh, you know, Twitter representation uh, in, in the federal um, <laughs> branch. But it's it's so Imagine funny. Imagine the quest. It's hilarious that Ken Klippenstein <laughs> is going to have to do his tweets. I don't even want to say specifically what he was tweeting yesterday, but there were some tweets of his which were cold blooded. <laughs> I will just say, so he's gonna have a rough time with Rob Portman. I will say, yeah. while like the I I don't understand the Moscow Mitch that doesn't make any sense to me. But um, saying that I forget who it was, but that someone was Susan Collins is the worst. First of all, that's objectively funny, and second of all, that isn't that bad. But saying that like like vampires have more heart than Ted Cruz, that's actually my new favorite thing about Neera Tandon ever is that she tweeted that. Yeah, I I kind of I kind of love it. Uh, I mean, I don't like her, and I think mm -hmm. that her her past stances on uh, budget cuts, when that was the Democratic Party line, to, as opposed to what she's claiming now, and you know, shape shifting for different political uh, polit yeah. or political people and stances and whatnot to to get ahead, is kind of the worst type of person you want in D.C., let alone the federal uh, government. So yeah. that's. Don't really care for it for that reason, but the tweets are funny, and um, <laughs> uh, I, that that's what I, I think it's it's funny to look back like ten years ago, fifteen years ago, when you know you were advised to never, you know, never really post post anything too controversial, never mm -hmm. wanted to post any pictures of yourself drinking because that could hurt future job prospects, and now she's out here basically giving the finger to like all of her <laughs> soon to be like colleagues, and just like yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a Twitch comment. Society. Oh, totally. Or we, we've changed at least. I don't know about evolved. Octo Squiddy <laughs> says, "Sir, you neglected to mention me calling you a punk ass bitch right now. So could you please add that to the record?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is good. Yeah, look, um, I don't I don't care about her tweets. I would say, I mean, you could accrue I think a lot of her tweets about Bernie Sanders supporters that are far harsher than the stuff she was saying about Ted Cruz. I would say if anything about her Twitter activity should concern someone, it's less the individual comment of tweets and more the sheer volume of tweeting because that's great. But then also that she would regularly late into the night like argue with totally random people. And that's sort of a weird thing for a government servant to do, to like have this fight when you have this huge platform, all these followers, like some rando, and you're just going back and forth in the middle of the night. That is very weird. But one final thing, let's also realize, or let's also acknowledge that Rob Portman, who is a Republican, and Republicans almost universally believe the single worst thing in America right now is cancel culture, is trying to get her blocked from government service 
because she tweeted that someone was the worst. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, it, I mean, that's all they really have on it because it's not exactly like they cared about like intervention in Libya. Like that's not really going to mm-hmm. raise a red flag for them. Exactly, um, which is something, something she she supported or taking money uh, from the Saudis and influencing their reports or. Uh, trying to break up the Think Progress Union and and just completely yeah. replace it and uh, have it like, just kind of like overnight replace it with scabs. Um, none of those would ever like ruffle any feathers on the right. It's that you said uh, Susan Collins was the worst. Mm-hmm. And Ted Cruz has a dead possum on his face. Yeah, it's like well, okay. That, that's I don't know if they actually care about the Ted Cruz stuff though that much. <laughs> no, I don't, don't think, think they do. Either. None of them. <laughs> like. They probably agree with that part. Yeah, it would have been great if he chuckled a bit and then moved on to the next one. <laughs> good one. Anyway, good one. okay, we'll we'll check in, see what happens with Nira Tandon. The the Dems, you know, control the chamber, so I'm sure she's going to be just fine. Um, and it's going to go back to tweeting all day long. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.